Hi, I'm Warwick from Harder and Steenbeck, and we're back here today with another series of questions that have come in from the community. And uh, these are always kind of fun because I never know what they are before we make the recording. So I'm going to hand it over to Steve, who's going to start reading them out. What is it you actually do for Harder and Steenbeck? <laughs> okay, I'm actually the general manager at Harder and Steenbeck, and I feel really fortunate to be able to say that that's what my job is, um, because it's a brand that I've got massive amounts of respect for. And um, I do have to say, honestly, that with all of the things that Harder and Steenbeck has innovated in the past, I really do feel like having this position. I am standing on the shoulders of giants. So um, yeah, I absolutely love the role. How long have you been with the company? Uh, I came to the company in 2017. So I've now been there for about six years. And when did you first ever get into airbrushing? Well, that goes back a lot longer, actually. So um, I started airbrushing, I think, when I was... Uh, Hmm, I think I was uh, 22 years old, actually. So that's uh, 28 years ago now. Yeah. What made you pick up an airbrush for the first ever time and think 22 years ago, this is something I want to do? Yeah, so I actually started working with um, a, a small airbrush distributor um, as my, my job. I was actually hired as the guy who was going to start out repairing um, people's compressors. That was my first job in the airbrush industry. Um, very quickly after that, um, I was quite fascinated by the airbrushes themselves, and so I had the opportunity to become um, an airbrush repairman for all the brands that were out there back then. So that's things like the old Aerographs, the Vilbus airbrushes, Pache's, obviously Iwata's were out there back then. Um, we had the beautiful Conopoise airbrush, the Roachering airbrush, um, so many of the old brands that were still around. There was a lot more diversity in terms of how people solved the problem of the airbrush back then. There was a lot of different approaches. So that job was really fun, and I think that's been a massive contributor to um, my knowledge base of how I approach my job now. I've been really fortunate to, to deal with all of those great old brands and you know see all of the, the things that this one was good at and that one not so much and so on. So it's, it's been a great grounding for me in that way to start out with that as my first set of jobs in the airbrush business. And were you an artist, or would you call yourself an artist, with even a brush before you started using the airbrush? Or was the airbrush your first time you really started to get into being a creative? Hmm, I, I really don't know if I'd even call myself an artist now, to be honest. Um, there's too many people who do it too much, way better than I've ever done it, for me to feel comfortable with, with calling myself that. Um, I, I started painting um, uh, in automotive was my, my first, let's say, paid work as an airbrush painter. Um, and the reason why I got into that was, was basically because of the two things I was interested in at the time, one of which was airbrushes and the other one was motorcycles. And so like a lot of motorcycle guys, you kind of think, yeah, I'd kind of like to paint my own crash helmet. Um, so I started out with that and um, really enjoyed it. And then started getting into painting crash helmets for other people, um, started painting full bikes, um, got into um, doing a bit of work on some fairgrounds, which was super fun. Just the massive scale of the projects that you get there was, was really, really fun. Um, and also because you get to work outdoors, which is brilliant. Um, had some really interesting projects come through. I'll never forget the one um, that we got from a, it was from a recording company, and they had these um, big alien sculptures. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to put them um, around this kind of clearing that they had near to their studios that, that were up in the, in the South Downs um, looking over Brighton. And um, they wanted it so that um, they looked one way under black light and they looked another way under regular light because they wanted to bathe them in black light and then strobe them. Um, and so that was a real challenge. And to paint that set of, of figures, I was um, pretty much locked myself away in my little studio at the time for, I can't remember how many nights, but it was a lot. It was, I think, coming on to two weeks where I was working in the night because I needed the studio to be completely black to work with these black light paints, which, which are transparent under normal light. So you can only work under black light. And I spent about, yeah, sort of seven or eight hours at a time working under black light for a good couple of weeks of very, very long nights. So that was a really challenging project, but so much fun to do and really enjoyed that one. I kind of wonder where they are now, actually. <laughs> Who or what inspires you when it comes to airbrushing? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's changed, you know, over the years. So it used to be that I would look at, um, you know, certain artists that I'd, I'd like to be able to paint more like. And that's kind of changed now, probably with the role that I play in the airbrush industry. And I think that there's two things that really excite me now. Um, one of them is uh, I love the idea that we can make a product that makes it easier for people to, to do something that surprises them, you know. So they do something and then they look at the results of their labor, of their creativity, um, and they're surprised by the beauty of it. So that, that really inspires me to be able to impact that. Um, I'm also really inspired by just being able to be involved in certain projects. So there's one in particular that, um, you know, I, I'm so proud of it and I'm so thankful that I could be involved in it. And that's the painting of the, the Ahmadiyya Children's Hospital in Kyiv, um, where, you know, we've, we've had this opportunity to work with the, the absolutely profoundly wonderful human being that is Angela Dimitrenko, who's been um, working with us to paint uh, now over 300 square meters of, of space in the Ahmadiyya Children's Hospital. And the goal of that is, is to provide an environment to children who can't go outside anymore because their illnesses are so severe and their immune systems are so compromised, to provide an environment to them where, you know, we give the spark to their imagination. And the idea is that they can be outside whilst being in the, the, the safe environment of the hospital um, and be able to have their imaginations inspired and to take back some of their childhood through this difficulty that they're suffering. And just the opportunity that I've had to be involved in a project like that, just I'm so thankful for that and I, I absolutely love it. Um, and I'm so in awe of what Angela has, has, has created there. Um, and I think probably the last thing I'd say about that is, is um, you know, as we've gone along, here at Harder and Steenbeck, I've tried to think about like what do we, how, how can we understand what we do in a wider context? So obviously, we all come into work every day to make airbrushes, of course. Um, but you know, could we understand and interpret a wider meaning to that? And and what we've all sort of come to settle on to understand what our purpose is is to say that we're providing a tool um, which is there to enable people to create um, beautiful things. So for example, an artist has a vision in their mind that none of us can see. It's only, only available to them. And we, we're trying to provide the tools that enable them to bring that out so they can share that with the world um, and, and, and give the sort of the, make the profundity of their creative imagination available to everybody else who would care to look at it. And then we've come to understand that. And then from that, we've drawn this kind of other level from it where we say we can participate in that too by creating things that are beautiful when you open the box. And so what we hope we give you um, when, when you buy an airbrush from us is we hope that when you open the box, we give you uh, a little bit of artistic joy with our creation. And we hope that when you take the end piece off the airbrush and you see how we've designed the internal parts. And we've thought about all of them as, um, you know, that we want to participate in the artistic endeavor with you. And we've tried to bring that into our airbrushes. And so I'm really inspired. I guess the way you would sum all that up is to say that, you know, we, we love the fact that through doing what we do, we have the ability to participate in the creative community and hopefully that we um, work with all of you to make it possible for you to share your artistic vision with the rest of the world. And so what we really hope we're doing is, you know, we're hoping to um, help more people be creative. Um, and we're hoping that we're, ha we're, we're helping more people to create um, more beautiful things to arrive into our world. And so, you know, we, we uh, that means quite a lot to us and, and that's, how I've come to explain what I do to myself, what my motivation is to kind of get up and come in in the morning. And um, I know that there's a great many people in our building who, who really feel exactly the same way. So yeah, I hope that answers that question.
I would love to work with Harder and Steenbeck. <laughs> How could somebody work closer with Harder and Steenbeck or even work for the company one day? Well, um, look, I mean, one of the one of the wonderful things about Harder and Steenbeck is we have a beautiful team of people, and that's not just the people in the factory. Um, we're so fortunate to have this fantastic group of people inside and outside the factory, all of whom collectively make what we like to call the Harder family. Um, and so I think the criteria for working with Harder and Steenbeck is that um, you have to want to um, share. You know, you have to want to share and support. And if you've got something in you that you feel you can contribute, that, that we can help you to do that, then there's almost certainly going to be a way that we can figure out that we can work together. Um, we love to find people who um, you know, have some unique knowledge and find ways of amplifying their sharing of that. Um, we love to find regular people who've had positive experiences that might be useful to other regular people to know about, to inspire them to say, if that regular guy could do it, then do you know what? I think maybe, maybe I could too and unlock that possibility for people. So anybody with any kind of a story like that, you know, we'd love to do something with you just to put it out there for others to be inspired and enabled by. In terms of working for the factory itself, we love people who love airbrushes and want to do what we do. So if you'd like to move to Norderstedt and join our team, just write to us and you never know what might happen because we're growing and we might well have a job for you. So get in touch if you really mean that and um, who knows what can happen. Okay, so thank you, Steve, for compiling those questions for us here. A little bit under the spot there, but you know what? We've got a, we've got a rule here at Harder and Steenbeck, which is any question that we get asked, we're going to answer it truthfully. And this is the basis of how we try to interact with our community. So there you go. There it is. I hope it's given you some insight into what we're trying to do as a company. And uh, like I always say, if you've got a question, please ask it. We will answer every single one. And I'd just like to thank all of you for the inspiration that you give us as a brand in trying to serve you better to unlock your creative potential and all of the beautiful things that all of you are going to create and share with your family, your friends, and the artistic community at large. Thanks so much for watching and see you on the next one.